Welcome to Iron Arrows. I guess you're wondering why I got a big old knife in the kitchen. I guess people use knives in kitchens. <laughs> I'm cutting up a sheep or a lamb or whatever you want to call it that randomly showed up in our yard. So we have this uh, livestock guardian dog that has basically adopted us. And um, it um, the sheep followed the livestock guardian dog into onto our farm. So we locked it up in our pasture with our cow and it got really big, really fast. It ate and ate and ate and ate and ate and it was bigger than, if you've seen some of our previous videos when we did pigs, the sheep outweighed the pigs by probably at least 75, 50, 75 pounds, it was huge. It was, um, it took three of us to carry when normally a pig would carry, it would take two of us. So anyways, it was a big, big sheep. So um, we decided yes, a couple of days ago to go ahead and process that sheep. So we, um, we took the sheep out and, and then we let it cool and age um, in coolers because we don't have a refrigerator big enough. So now we're cutting it up. So most people would probably cut this up into like kind of a spare rib kind of thing and do lamb chops up here. We're we a big do sausage, uh, like ground beef. silly ground um, Roasts are good. Um, roast and things like that. So we're going for the whole ground um, lamb route. So we're cutting this up into... I think it's a sheep because lamb are babies. I don't know how old it was, but we had it at least probably, what, four months? Yeah. yeah. So, so. We, um, so that's what we're doing. We're cutting it up in our kitchen. Um, just a minute. So this is something that um, if you are a homesteader, you probably should learn how to do this so that um, if you have to, you know how. Uh, a lot of people right now are do talking about all these different preps and things. Um, and there's preppers out there and most homesteaders would probably consider themselves somewhat of a prepper but they would, they're in it for the long haul. So skills are what you need to learn and you need to um, um, be able to resupply your preps. So if you have food, which most of us that are homesteaders do have food in our um, pantries and different areas and um, that's good. But if you don't have a way to resupply that food, then you're probably not it, it's it you need a way to resupply so so yeah growing gardens and raising animals and things like that um is a way to um resupply yourself for um, things and again challenging yourself even though you work eight hours and then you go help somebody on their their property and and you come home, you get home a little bit early, so you're like, oh, let's go ahead and process that lamb we killed two days ago so that we can get it in the freezer. Um, it's good to press yourself. Um, it's good to learn. It's good to do hard things because things could get hard. And if they do get hard and you're not used to it, then you're gonna be in trouble. But if you're used to it doing hard things now, and things that maybe bring you out of your comfort zone, um, then it'll be a little easier when you have to do hard things because nobody's delivering food to you. Um, so just an example is I'm a contractor and I, um, I went today to find some, just a, um, a meter hub so I can build a temp pole for somebody and nobody has any. I couldn't find any meter hubs in the local city where we're near. Um, so I called a friend of mine and he has a few, so he's gonna sell me one of his, but um, he stored them up ahead of time because that's his business. He's an electrician um, and he, um, he just, looked ahead and said, well, I probably better put some of this stuff in my shop. So, 
So think about what you need. Think about what you need to learn um, and learn those things. Um, and store up things that you need um, and get ready because you never know what's coming. So yeah, it could be inflation. It could be inflation. We're already suffering from it. Yeah, it's um, getting you know, bad. The supply chain is all messed up. You go to the grocery stores and there's empty shelves or there's a Expensive whole row stuff. of green beans. You know, <laughs> it's interesting when Walmart's selling all green beans in the entire row and, you know. So. <laughs> and that was one of our children. That was one of our children. All right. So I'm just going to come over here. Um, we have organ meat. So there's that. I'm putting it all in a garbage bag just till it freezes. And putting this in the freezer. Um, these are like part of the legs. Yeah. Just sausage meat. We'll, um, our KitchenAid broke. That's our sausage grinder. But we also have a manual one. On, we just have to find it. So, so we'll, we'll do that. It's all processed. <laughs> it's a weekday, so. It is a weekday. Life is crazy. And we didn't think we were going to need the manual grinder. It is somewhere in my basement <laughs> and we haven't unpacked everything since we moved here a year ago so uh we just pack unpack the things we needed and we have processed animals in between um that we just year. chunked all the meat but yeah. we we did chunk all the meat and then if we did need to grind anything we did have the kitchen aid and the grinder on the kitchen oh, aid, so yeah. and now that is not working so um so yeah stuff happens you just have to roll with it. So we'll find our, our manual grinder. But be prepared. Get a manual grinder if you think, yep. you, or maybe two, <laughs> if you think you're going to want to hunt any food or raise animals for meat. Yeah, you can dice it. Um, we may be taking some of this meat and um, doing some pressure canning. Um, we have, haven't done that before. Um, we've seen other people do it, but we've, we've never just done, done veggies, it. but... And so we may be <laughs> taking some of this and pressure canning it. And if we do, maybe, if you're good, we'll let you see it. Um, so that's what I tell my kids. If you're good, they're, they're always good. I always joke around with them. So, so yeah, this is just the way I did it. I did an elk this whole, like, I was, when I was in the military and I was in California, there was a chaplain who got an elk. Um, tag and um, then he was gonna be I helped him and I just helped him process it and when we were all done this is how what I did I cut all the meat off the off the ribs and um, then he said well I'm moving so you can have all the meat so I had in our freezer like a whole elk sitting there and we ground up some of it using the manual grinder um, and a lot of it, like we had, and then and we ended up transferring and we gave all that meat to someone else, um, who was blessed to buy it. So, but, um, it's a good skill to have. Um, there's a good book out there. Um, I think it's called the butcher book. Um, I don't know where I think that it was out. It was out. Um, it teaches you how to cut up uh, meat. Maybe we'll put it a link of it into the description. But um, yeah, our oldest was using it to read how to tan the hide, right? Yeah, but it didn't have that information oh, in okay. there, so he did bring it back in. But I don't remember. Where so he yeah, put so it. he's saving the hide. So he has it in salt right now, and he bought some. Talk about that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, our son, he likes to learn things and he studies like edible plants and things like that. And one of the things he's always wanted to do whenever we process deer or anything like that, he always wanted to keep the hide. Um, so this sheep was, it didn't have, wool. um, wool. <laughs> It had hair. Um, some people call it a goat sheep. I don't know. It's just a different kind of sheep. And so um, the pelt was actually 
kind of cool looking. So my son took it, carefully scraped off all the, the fat and any leftover meat from it. And then he salted it um, to start curing it. And then he went out and bought some, um, some tanning hot, um, solution. And so he's going to be working on that. He might actually be doing that right now and that might be why he's not around. Um, so he does all kinds of stuff like that. He forges, um, he wants to buy a welder. Um, and he wants to learn all these different kinds of skills, which is cool. Again, I mean, like you never know what you might need in the future. And even if nothing bad happens, which I it's can't doubtful. imagine <laughs> that nothing bad will happen. Cause inflation's um, happening already. But um, just it, if nothing happens, like, you know, we've taught ourselves how to do auto mechanics. We've taught ourselves, I mean, I'm a contractor. Um, the more you can do, the more you save money. Um, so even just from a financial viewpoint, it's, um, it's good to learn how to do these things. So like if I was going to take this somewhere, I would have to pay somebody money to do it or let them keep some of the meat or whatever, however they're gonna be charged. But now doing it in my kitchen and in my backyard, I um, I don't have to do that. So it's just good to, to learn whatever you can um, and practice so that um, you can get better at it and you have a skill. So if everything falls apart, Somebody doesn't know how to process their cows and they have cows. You can say, hey, I'll do that for you if you let me keep some of the meat. Um, and then you can feed your family. So, because you've learned a skill. Um, so, you can see how fat this yeah. sheep was. I mean, there's like a lot. <laughs> there's a lot more fat on this sheep than... Than a goat than, or a deer, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um... I kind of thought it was like, because it did have some hair. I thought, you know. Yeah, we thought maybe oh, we were wrong and maybe there was wool going on this thing. And, and then we had a farmer come by and look at it. And he says, oh, I think, I think maybe it's pregnant. And then he looked at it closer and he goes, oh, no, that's not pregnant. He's just fat. She's just fat. And yeah, so, we've had it for like at least seven. I think, because I, I want to say we got her. She wandered up. Like early summer, June or July, and it's February. So yeah, she was. That's longer than just Jason. Just, she, yeah, and she was skinny when she first came. And so there she was might have been fairly young. There was nothing. So when I processed, there was nothing. So In there, she yeah. wasn't pregnant. Um, I probably would have felt bad if she was, but she wasn't. So, anyways, um, leave your comments, like and subscribe. You know, because. <laughs> We would like it if you subscribed. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And if there's anything else you want to see from our channel, please leave it in the comments and we'll see if maybe we can show you some of the things we do. Um, oh, I can show sourdough right now. Yeah, we can you... show you some sourdough. Okay. So I've been cooking this probably 25 minutes at 450 because, you know, we were taping video. Oh. I don't think it was that quite up to heat. So I'm gonna leave this lid on. Um, and I usually leave it in here for 20 minutes with the lid on, um, on 450. And then I'll lower the heat to 350 and leave it for another 20 to 30 minutes. I do it by, I eyeball it. I don't really time it. So <laughs> um, I think it's taking longer because the heat was on 350 because I made cookies or 375. So. I put it in there before it reached the temperature. But usually it'll start to brown a tiny bit and then I'll take the lid off and bring it down to 350. Um, and there we go. And we got some cookies here. So on that note, this is Iron Arrows. Signing out.